Today I'm going to present the Libra blockchain which is newly introduced by Facebook company. Okay, the Libra blockchain is decentralized programmable database designed to support a low volatility cryptocurrency that will have the ability to serve as an efficient medium of exchange for billions of people around the world. So the Libra's mission is the making a good global currency and the financial infrastructure that empowers billions of people. So this is basic of Libra. So the Libra blockchain is cryptographically authenticated database using the Libra protocol. And the database stores a ledger of programmable resources such as Libra coin. <clears throat> and a resource is owned by an account that is authenticated using public key cryptography. So first of all, I assume that Libra is based on Facebook account, but actually Libra is based on account that is authenticated using public key cryptography, such as like the Bitcoin or Ethereum. So the, and the Libra blockchain uses new programming language Move that is executable bytecode language used to implement custom transaction and smart contract. And so this is Libra protocol overview. Libra has two types of entity, cl entity client and validators. Step one, uh, uh, before I explain step, client perform queries on the database and the submit transaction to modify it, and validators perform the maintenance, maintain the database, including transaction consensus, validation, and storing data. So step one, validators maintain the database and process transactions submitted by client. <clears throat> and the validator use a distri distributed consensus protocol to agree on an ever-growing list of transactions. In Libra, it used PVST concept, consensus algorithm, so that the all system can reach the consensus with the minority of Byzantine validator. So step two, validator leaders propose transaction from client or other validators and then <clears throat> all validators execute the transaction and form an authenticated data structure that contains the new ledger history. And the validator <coughs> Both on the authenticator for this data structure as part of consensus protocol and the consensus protocol output a signature on the first state of database at version i. Okay, from now on I will explain component and flow of Libra. First is logical data model. The logical data model organizes the decentralized database visible to validators and clients. A Libra blockchain is stored in a single version database. A number i is an integer that corresponds to number of transactions the system has executed. And each number i, the database contains tuple, transaction, output, and ledger state. And in Libra, ledger state Libra protocol uses an account-based data model to encode the ledger state like Ethereum or Bitcoin. The state is structured as a key value store which maps account address key to account address value. So the key and value. So in Libra protocol, it doesn't link account to a real world identity. And this is a resource, this is a ledger state, resource value, and module value. So, a resource is record that the bind named field to simple or complex value. So, let's see this figure. In this figure, you can see the currency.t. In this case, Currency is a uh, name of module. So this is module. And this is T is a uh, name of resource. So 
This is resource, and this is module. So, <clears throat> in Libra, or uh, when they want to access some resource, they can access using access path like this. Okay. And uh, this is a logical data model transaction. So transaction consists of transaction script written in the move byte code and argument to the transaction script. So as, and after the transaction execution, they can generate to transaction output and event. So executing a transaction produce a new ledger state SI as well as execution status code and guess usage and event list. And the li event list is set of side effects produced by executing the transaction and move code can trigger an event emission row or event structure. Now it is a ledger history. A uh, ledger history stores a sequence of committed and executed transactions as well as the associated events they emitted. So what is the purpose of the ledger history? Uh, the purpose of the ledger history is keep a new record of how the latest ledger state was computed. And in Libra, ledger history usage is first responding to client queries. So validator can use the ledger history to answer client query ab about previous ledger state, transaction, and output. And second is auditing transaction execution. A client can check the ledger state is corrected by re-executing each transition in the history. And uh, comparing the com computed ledger state to the corresponding ledger state SI and transition output OI in the version database. Okay, from now on, I will explain the component uh, uh, is executing transition. So, uh, when the transition to be executed, there are three execution requirements. First, no initial state. So, core components of blockchain such as the logic of account, transaction validation, validator selection, and Libra coin are defined as move modules. So, the genesis state must define this module. So, this step can be processed by special transaction. So, the all validators must agree on the initial or genesis ledger state of the system. And second requirement is deterministic. So the transaction execution must be deterministic and hermetic. And this means that the output of transaction execution is completely predictable and based only on the information contained within the transaction and current ledger, ledger state. And third requirement is metered. In order to manage demand for the compute capacity, the Libra protocol charges transaction fee denominated in Libra coins. And this follows the gas model pop popularized by Ethereum. Libra takes the approach of selecting validators with sufficient ca capacity to meet the needs of the Libra ecosystem like Kakao blockchain Clayton. And this is transaction structure. Transition consists of sender address, sender public key, program, gas price, maximum gas amount, and sequence number. If you know Ethereum or other blockchain platform, you can understand easily sender address, sender public key, gas price, and maximum gas amount. The program um, is a move bytecode transition script to execute an optional list of inputs to the script. And sequence number is an unsigned integer that must be equal to sequence number from sender's Libra's account.t resource. After this transaction is executed, the sequence number is incremented by one. Since only one transaction can be committed for a given sequence number, transactions cannot be replayed. So the sequence number plays an important role to prevent reply or replay attack. So this is transaction execution step. So executing a transaction proceed 
throw a sequence of six steps inside the virtual machine. Execution is separate from the update of ledger state. So first is check signature and run prolog, verify transaction scripts and modules, and publish module and run transition script and run epilogue. I will explain the step one by one. First step is check signature. In this step, check if sender's public key matches the transition data sig signature. And second step is run prolog. Uh, prolog authenticate the transition sender and ensure that the sender has sufficient Libra coin to pay for the maximum number of guest units specified in the transition and to check the transaction is not a replay of previous transaction by comparing transaction sequence number and that of stored under the user's account. So in step of run prolog, they check these three metrics. And third step is verify transaction script and modules. So this this in this step, it's before actually running or publishing any move code, the bytecode verifier check crucial properties like type safety or reference safety or resource safety. And fourth step is publish module. In this step, check if there is duplicate name between user's account and the program in the transaction that published the module. And fifth step is run transaction script. A move virtual machine bind the transaction argument to the former parameters of transaction script and execute it. So, what is the argument? Uh, argument can be concept in concept Libra coin. Argument can be recipient account address or the number of Libra to send. Uh, if this script execution complete successfully, the write operation performed by the script and the events emitted by the script are committed to a uh, global state. But uh, if the script execution fail, no changes from the script are committed to the global state. And finally, run up epilogue step, the virtual machine runs the transition Epilogue to charge the user for the guess used and increment the sender's account sequence number. Like the prologue, the transaction epilogue is procedure of the move Libra account module and runs with guest metering disabled. Uh, the prologue and the epilogue work together to ensure that all transactions accepted in the ledger history are charged for gas. So, transactions that do not proceed beyond the step 2, the run prologue, are not appended to the ledger history. The fact that this transaction were considered for execution is never recorded. If a transaction advances past step 2, the prolog has ensured that the account has enough Libra coins to pay for the maximum number of gas units allowed for the transaction. Even if the transaction runs out of gas, the epilog is able to cha charge it for this maximum amount. And the li in Libra blockchain, they introduce new programming language move. In Libra blockchain, move has many roles. First, enable flexible transition via uh, transition script and allow user defined code and data types, including smart contracts via modules, and support configuration and extensibility of the Libra. But in this seminar, I will skip the details of the move. Okay, next part is authenticated data structure and storage. A logical model, I explained Libra's logical model in previous slide. Uh, after executing a transaction, a validator translates the changes to the logical data model into a new version of an authenticated data structure used to represent Libra database. And the short authenticator of this data structure is binding commitment to ledger history, which includes the duly executed transaction. And the consensus protocol uses this 
authenticator to agree on an ordering of transaction and their resulting execution. And the uh, data structure in Libra protocol are based on market trees like other blockchain pl platforms. An authenticated data structure allows a verifier to hold the short authenticator A, which forms a binding commitment to a larger larger data structure D. And R is a result of computation of some function F on D, and pi is a proof of the correct computation of the result. So verifier can run verify which returns true if and only if f d is a result so f is a function that gets the third item then result is s2 and pi is h3 and h4 so verify this verify that authenticator a is E check if authenticator A is equal uh, hash to result this and hash h3 and hash of that this this So the ver verifier authenticates to look up for an item i in D by returning a proof pi that consists of the labels of sibling of each of the ancestor of nodes i. Uh, Libra database has ledger history, ledger state, account, and event. And this is a ledger history. So ledger history is represented as a marker tree mapping a sequential database version number i to transition info structure. So this is very important concept. And transition info i structure contains a signed transition and authenticator for the tra state after the execution of ti and the authenticator for the events generated by transition i. So when a client wishes to query the state of version i, or look up an event generated in version i, it performs an authenticated lookup of transition info i along with an authenticated lookup using the contained state or event list authenticator. So let's see this figure shows the data structure that under underpins the Libra database. So this is a li Libra database. So this is le this is ledger history that I mentioned the previous slide and the root hash of the ledger history structure is the authenticator to the full state of the system that is signed by quorum of vali validator. So this is authenticator of full state. And each leaf node indicates one transaction authenticator. So this is TX. As transactions are added to the database, the authenticator committing to the ledger history grows. Each leaf of the ledger history commits to the transaction info i structure, and transaction info commits to the signed transaction and event tree and ledger state. And the ledger state is sparse marker tree with an account blob at each leaf. So this okay. Uh, this is a whole data structure of Libra database. From now on, we will discuss Libra's consensus algorithm. So Libra adopted BFT line consensus algorithm called Libra BFT. So before this discussing Libra BFT, we need to know about Hastoff algorithm because Libra BFT is based on Hastoff algorithm which is leader-based Byzantine fault tolerance replication protocol published in 2018. So this algorithm compared to practical Byzantine fault tolerance algorithm, 
has to change its PBFT's mesh communication network to a star communication. And the has to merge the view change process with the normal process, which means there is no longer a separate view change process, thus reducing the complexity of the view change. So in this concept, at each round has different leader. And after each round finishes, each replica can directly switch the new views and uh, notify the notifies the leader. So why Libra used the Hustop concept? A reason for selecting the Hustop protocol first is simplicity and modularity of the safety argument, and second, ability to easily integrate cons consensus with execution. And third is promising performance in early experiments. And this is a basic of Hustop. In basic Hustop, the protocol works in a succession of view numbers with monotonically increasing view numbers. And each view number has unique dedicated leaders known to all. And each replica stores a tree of pending command as each local data structure. So it, this is a very important concept. And each tree node contains a proposed command and metadata association with the protocol and parent link. So the tree like this and each node contains a proposed comment, metadata and parent link. So this is parent link. And the branch lead by given node is the path from the or node all the way to the tree root by visiting parent links. And the, during the protocol, a monotonical green branch becomes committed. And to become committed, the leader of a particular view proposing the branch must collect both from a quorum of M minus F replicas in the three page. Prepare, pre-commit, commit. And this collection of both refer to as quorum certificate. So this is very important. And this is co this QC is associated with particular node and a view number. So how stuff has four page prepare, pre-commit, commit decide. So first page is prepare page. The protocol for a new leader starts by collecting new view message from replicas. When the leader has collected the request from M minus F re replicas, leaders select the prepare QC with the highest view. Then leaders send the prepare message that contains high QC to all other replicas. So the this is prepare QC with highest view and leader make a new tree node that this is high QC so leader send send a prepare message include high high QC and other replica receiving the prepare message for the current view, then they check the safe node predicate and vote for the message. So what is safe node predicate? Is the first is the safety rule to accept a proposal is the branch of this is pro prepare message. That node extend from currently locked node locked QC that node. In live list rule is the replica will accept M if M justify has a higher view than the current locked QC. So the predicate is true as long as either one of two rules hold. And this is pre commit page when the leader receive M minus F prepare both for the current proposal, it combines them prepare QC. And the leader broadcast prepare QC in pre commit messages. And replica respond to the leader with pre commit both having a signed digest of the proposal. So leader receive M minus F prepare both and 
it combines the critical system and sends it to other nodes. And the uh, other other nodes respond to the leader with the uh, pre-commit bot. To leader. Okay. Uh, the commit phase is similar to pre-commit phase. When the leader receives pre-commit bot, it combines them into pre-commit QC and broadcasts it it in a commit message to all node and a replica becomes locked on the pre-commit QC at this point by setting its locked QC to pre-commit QC. And last step is decide phase. When the leader receives M minus F commit bot, it combines them into commit QC and once the leader has assembled the commit QC, it sends a decide message to all the other replicas. So upon receiving all decide messages, a replica is queued to stand transition in a committed branch and uh, starts the next view. So this is figure of a hostop protocol procedure. So each page you can see leader periodically collects message from the other replica. And this start topology can reduce communication cost by contrasting PBST. And every page leader collects message to make quorum certificates and the replica responds to leader as a voting. Okay, this is Libra BST workflow. So this com uh so validators receive transactions from client and share them with each other through a shared mempool. So this component I will explain, explain later. And the Libra BFT protocol then proceed in the seconds of, of round. In each round, leader propose a block of transaction to extend the certificate certified seconds of block QC that contain the full previous transition history. And the validator receive proposed block and check their voting rules to determine if it should vote for certifying this block. So this voting rules is uh, safe predicate predicate that I mentioned before. And the leader gathers this bot to form QC which provides evidence of 2A plus greater than 2A plus 1 vote for this block and broadcast the QC to all validators. And this figure is flow <coughs> Libra B, flow of Libra BFT. So B1 means blocks and V1 is voting and C means uh, certificate. So every round has proposal, voting, collect, quorum, certificate, certification step. Uh, in Libra BFT, use randomized leader selection so every round has randomized leader. So this concept is different from existing hostop algorithm. Okay, and this is about the uh, Libra core implementation. So to validate the Libra protocol, Libra is built on open source prototype implementation Libra core. And implementation is written in Rust and Libra has split the internal component the system as gRPC service. And security of blo Libra blockchain rests on the correct implementation implementation of validators, move programs and move virtual machine. So addressing these issues in Libra core is work in progress. 
Uh, this figure shows the life cycle of transition within Libra core that support the right operation to the decentralized database. So, <clears throat> upon receiving a transition, a validator's admission control component performs the initial synthetic check. To discard the malformed transition that will never be executed. An admission controller may access the virtual machine, which uses the storage component to perform checks such as ensuring the account has a sufficient balance to pay the gas for the transition. The admission controller component is designed to so that a validator can run multiple instances of the component. And then, Transactions that pass the checks of the admission control component are sent to validator's mempool, which hold transaction waiting to be executed in in-memory buffer. Uh, because the mempool processes multiple transactions at a time, it can perform checks such as validating that the seconds of operation on the same address can all pay for gas that the admission control system cannot. So using the shared mempool protocols. A validator shares the transaction in each mempool with other validators and place transaction received from other validators in each own mempool. And validators create block by selecting a sequence of transaction from their mempool. When a validator acts as a leader of the consensus protocol, he forms a block of transaction from each mempool. And in, he send this block of transaction as a proposal to other validators. The consensus component is responsible for coordinating agreement among all validators on the sequence of this block of transaction. So. And now. As part of reaching agreement, the block of transition is passed to the executor component, which manages the execution of transition in the virtual machine. After executing the transition in the block, the execution component builds the ledger history with these transitions appended. The ledger history authenticator is returned to the consensus compo component. And the leader then attempts to reach consensus on this authenticator by forming a chain of quorum certificate, each of which is signed by a set of validators with at least two F plus one votes. And finally, once the consensus algorithm reaches agreement, any honest validators can be sure that all other honest validators will eventually commit a consistent ledger history. The validators read the result of block execution from the cache in the execution component and update its local database storage. Okay, and this is about the read request life cycle. So read requests do not mutate state and can be processed by locally without going through consensus. And Read requests are submitted to the validator, validator's admission control component. So, this. And the admission control component performs preliminary checks and read the data from storage, and the result is sent back to the client. Okay. And the technical part of Libra is ended. And this is about the Libra ecosystem. So, unlike existing cryptocurrency, uh, before existing cryptocurrency are not backed by real world assets, and as a result, investment and speculation have been primary use case. The reserve co concept is the key mechanism for achieving value pre preservation, and through the reserve, each coin is fully backed with a set of stable and liquid assets. And the reserve assets are a collection of low volatility assets including cash and government security from stable and reputable central banks. 
And the reserve is managed by Libra Association. You can see this picture. And Libra blockchain only grants votes to found, founding members entities that meet a set of predefined founding member and commit a certain amount into the project. So these rules help to ensure the security requirements having a safe and live validator set. Uh, all of these things all of these settings, setting validator set, contract of Libra coin, governance are implemented by Move. And the consensus algorithm relies, relies on the validator set management Move module to maintain the current set of validators and manage the allocation of votes among the validators. So, conclusion Libra blockchain's important thing is designing and using the new move programming language and using a Byzantine fault tolerance consensus approach and adapting on iterating on widely adapted blockchain data structure. So technically there is no shocking news, but they have association consists of many stable enterprise. And Libra is trying to bypass the limitation of blockchains such as security, scalability, data processing and storage capacity with the stable federation validator configuration. But the protocol is still under development and its future success depends on the stability of move, the establishment of the validator ecosystem, and the performance of actual consensus implementation and the breakdown of government regulation. Okay, thank you for listening my presentation.